we're solving this equation. for some potential. And uh, since H is permission, we have the results that we mentioned last time. That is, the eigenfunctions of H are going to form an orthonormal set of functions that span the space. You can expand anything on there. This is what we prove for a general permission operator to some degree. So uh, the eigenfunctions form an orthonormal set that spans. Spans the space. So you're going to find a psi 1 with an E1, a psi 2 with an E2, and then this continues. And this is called the spectrum of the theory. Of the theory. Because energy eigenstates are considered the gold standard. Oh. If you want to find solving a theory means finding the energy eigenstates. Because if you find the energy eigenstates, you can solve, you can write any wave function as superposition of energy eigenstates and then just let them evolve. <coughs> and the energy eigenstates evolve easily because they are just stationary states. So the spectrum of the theory is the collection of numbers that are the allowed energies. And, of course, the associated eigenfunction. So the energies may be many, may be discrete, maybe there has a little bit of continuous part. There's all kind of varieties. But your task is to find those uh, for any problem. So the equation that we're trying to solve is now rewritten uh, because we're going to try to solve it. So let's look at it. It's a second order differential equation with a potential in general. So uh, we have it somewhere there. It's there, it's boxed. So we'll write it slightly different. We move the potential to the right hand side and get rid of the constants here. So um, Okay, so this is the equation we have to solve. So whenever you have a problem, you may encounter a potential, V of x. And the question is how bad this potential can be. Well, the potential may be nice and simple. Or it may be uh, nice, but then have some jumps. It may have infinite jumps. 
like a potential, it's a complete barrier, or it may have delta functions. All these are the effects possible. <coughs> All many things can happen with the potential. In fact, the potential can be as strange as you want, depending on what problems you want to solve. So uh, it's your choice. Now, we are going to accept, in fact, all of those potentials for our analysis. Maybe nice and smooth, they may have discontinuities. It may have infinite discontinuities and worse things like delta functions. But worse things than that, we will ignore. And there are worse things like that. Um, maybe a potential is discontinuous at every point, or maybe a potential that has delta functions and derivatives of delta functions, or potentials that blow up and do all kinds of things. But this is, uh, and I'm not saying you should never consider that. I'm saying that we don't know of any very useful case where you get anything interesting with that. But it's conceivable that a particular kind of singular potential one day could be interesting. So we look at these potentials and try to understand We try to understand how to set up boundary conditions. And we're going to worry about basically psi and how, how does it behave. And my first claim is that psi of x has to be continuous. So psi of x cannot jump. The wave function move along, but cannot jump. And the reason is uh, the differential equation. Look, uh, if psi of x was not continuous, if psi of x was like this, it just had a discontinuity, psi of x is like this. Psi prime of x would contain a delta function at this discontinuity. The derivative is infinite. And psi double prime of x, the second derivative, would have a derivative of a delta function, which is worse, because a delta function, we think of it as a spike that is becoming thinner <coughs> and higher, but then the derivative of the delta function first goes to infinity and then goes to minus infinity and then comes back. Um, it's, it's much worse um, in many ways. And look, if you have this differential equation and psi is not continuous, well, the right-hand side is not continuous or um, or it may have a delta function that is something not continuous, but the left-hand side will have a derivative of a delta function that is nowhere on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, the worst thing that could exist is a delta function in V of x. But the derivative of a delta function doesn't exist, so you cannot afford to have a psi that is discontinuous. Psi has to be continuous. There's other ways to argue this. I might put them in the notes. But um, I'll leave it like that. Now, if, now how about the next case? I will say the following happens to the Psi prime of x is continuous. Unless V of x has a delta function. Okay. 
You see, potentials with delta functions are nice, they are interesting. We will consider that. Delta function potentials can be attractive potentials, repulsive potentials, that are quite interesting. So I claim now that psi prime of x has to also be continuous. Why are we worrying about psi and psi prime? It's because you need two conditions whenever you're going to solve this differential equation at an interface. Uh, you will need to know if psi is continuous and psi prime is continuous because it's a second order differential equation. So uh, suppose psi prime is continuous, then uh, there's no problem. Uh, if psi prime is continuous, the worst that it can happen is that the second derivative is discontinuous. And the second derivative is discontinuous could happen with a potential that is discontinuous. So no problem if psi prime is continuous. But uh, psi prime can fail to be continuous if the potential has a delta function. And let's see that if psi prime, if psi prime is discontinuous, then psi double prime is proportional to a delta function. If psi prime is discontinuous, psi prime is double prime is proportional to a delta function. But here, psi just takes some value. There's nothing strange about it. In order to a delta function, which is psi double prime, to be equal to this right hand side, v of x must have a delta function. If psi is a delta and v will have a delta function. So it will be a, a somewhat singular potential. But we're going to look at them in about a week from now. But now, uh, this will be our guidance to solve problems. The continuity of the wave function and the continuity of the derivative of the wave function. And uh, for these uh, slightly more complicated problems in which the potential has a delta function, then you will have a discontinuity in psi prime, and it will be calculable, and it's manageable, and it's all very nice. Now it looks a little complicated, and everything is kind of mixed up, but uh, you will see that it's quite doable.